Okay, guys, back at it. We're going to talk about the integrated rate law. Now, using the word integrated means we're going to be playing with calculus. But don't panic. I'm not going to ask you to do calculus. We're going to just use the miracle of calculus. Okay? Now, an integrated rate law is another equation that is going to allow us to relate rate concentration and time okay so it's going to allow us to relate concentration and time to explore integrated rate laws we're going to look at very simple systems one where we have one reactant okay and we're going to limit ourselves to first order processes where the rate order is one or the rate order is two or the rate order is zero so we're going to have three cases, okay? So first case we're going to look at is a first order process. So if I have a reaction A going to B and the rate law is equal to rate K A to the first power, we calculated the rate of the reaction as being minus one over one, the change in concentration of A with time, because notice the exponent in front of A is one. Setting the rate equal to each other. Here's the rate law, and here's how we experimentally calculated the rate. We get this kind of equation. Okay? Don't panic. I'm not asking you to do calculus. If we rearrange it so that we have the change in concentration of A, and this should, oh, I won't worry about it. Change in concentration of A over the concentration of A equals KT, and we do calculus. See, calculus. The miracle of calculus gives us the following equation. The natural log of A at times zero over A at times T equals KT, which can be written as the natural log of A at times zero minus the natural log of A at times T equals KT. Now, we want this equation in good Y equals MX plus B form, so it requires a little rearrangement. The natural log of A at times T is equal to minus KT plus the natural log of A at times zero. Okay? So now I've got it in Y, what we're looking at, you know, down the road is equal to a minus K. T here acts like the X in the Y equals MX plus B and the natural log of A at times zero. Now this is, becomes a plug and chug equation when you know something is first order. Okay. For a first order process, then a graph of natural log versus time is going to give you a straight line graph with a slope of minus k. Now, we're going to look at page 600, practice problem 14.1, I mean 14.3, and then we may look at 14.4, but definitely 14.3. So let's flip to page 600 in the text, okay? It says, use the graph and best fitting line from example 14.3 to predict the concentration of uh, sulfur dioxide dichloride at 1,900 seconds. If we look at the graph, okay? Let me see if I can give you an example. Now, there's the graph. Okay, guys. Now, let's look at an example problem. Okay, we're looking at problem 600 uh, on page 614.3. And then you guys can look at 14.4 on your own. Okay? If we look at the problem, it says use a graph for the problem, practice problem 14.3, and it's best fitting line to predict the concentration of sulfur dioxide dichloride at 1900 seconds. Okay? So if we look at the problem and we look at the graph, the data in the graph, so let's look at it. Okay, here it is in your book. Here's all the data. Okay, here's the graph. 
Now from the graph, we can get the slope of the line and that'll tell us K, okay? And then up here on the chart, we get the value, the concentration at time zero. So let's start working this problem, okay? So if we look at it, the natural log of sulfur dioxide dichloride at times T is going to equal minus K. K was 0 0.000290. Now, because it is first order, okay, the rate for a first order problem has units of over seconds, okay? One over seconds, or I can put seconds in the denominator. Our initial concentration of sulfur dioxide dichloride, right here, is equal to 0 0.100 molar. Okay, and I'll put the big M in here. Now, if I plug in, then I have the natural log of sulfur dioxide dichloride at times T is equal to minus 0 0.002900 times 1900 seconds plus the natural log of 0 0.100 molar and then the natural log of sulfur dioxide dichloride at times T is equal to minus 7.812585 over kill on significant figures but we're going to take care of that at the end and so to undo a natural log we've got to use E so the concentration of sulfur dioxide dichloride at times T is E to the minus 7.812585. Now, we started out with three significant figures here. So this is what my calculator is reading. I need to round it to three significant figures, so I'm going to round that to five. Okay? So there's our answer for 14.3. Now, we can do the same thing with a second order reaction. Okay, we go through the same process, saying A going to B, and the rate order now is second order. Okay, we set equal and rearrange, and lo and behold, we get this equation. One over A at times T minus one over A at times zero is equal to KT. I can say one over A at times T is equal to KT plus 1 over the concentration of A at times 0. Okay? So we've got a graph of 1 over concentration as a function of time, and it's going to be a straight line, and it's going to have a positive slope. Okay? Let's look at practice problem six, uh, 14.5 on page 602. Now, if we read the problem, it says use the graph and best fitting line to predict the concentration of nitrogen dioxide at 2,000 seconds. So our time is 2,000 seconds. Okay? Now, looking at the graph, you can look at it in your book, but here, well, let me show you. Okay, here's the graph. Now, notice when they did one over a natural log of concentration versus time, they didn't get a straight line. But when we do one over concentration, we get a straight line with a positive slope, which is 0.22, I mean 0.255, okay? So we know K is 0 0.255, and the units are liters over moles times seconds. You also can see it written as molarity raised to the minus one seconds raised to the minus one. Means the same thing, okay. And our initial concentration is given to us as 
zero concentration initially of our NO2. is 0 0.0100 molar. So if we start plugging in, okay, we're going to be plugging into that equation. I'm going to go 1 divided by the concentration, well, I'll just highlight this. Well, the concentration of NO2 at times T is equal to 0 0.255. Well, I'll just highlight it. Times 2,000 seconds. And then we add 1 divided by point zero, um, zero point zero one zero zero molarity. Okay? So we're going to solve for the concentration of in at time t, and if we do that, I have 1 divided by 0 0.011 plus 0.255 times 2,000, and I'm going to take 1 over that to get my answer, and I get 7.05 times 10 to the negative 3 molar as our concentration. Okay? Now, remember I've got 1 over in this equation. So, you know, when you s solve this side, you get 1 over concentration, you have to invert it to get your answer. All right? Now, for a zero order, we end up with the equation a at times T equals minus KT plus the concentration of A at times zero. Okay, okay. A graph of concentration versus time is going to give us a straight line with a negative slope. Okay. Now, that's a really simple equation. I'm not going to do an example for you. I'm pretty sure you can handle that one on your own. Cancel that. So, let's talk half-life. Half-life, T1 half, is the time for one half of a reactant to be used up. So that concentration of A at T1 half is equal to one half the initial concentration. We're just going to look at what the equations are going to look like. Okay, for a first order process, T1 half equals the natural log of 2 over K. We usually just write 0.693 over K. For a second order process, T1 half equals 1 over K A0. So notice in a first order process, the half life is independent of starting concentration. But in a second order process, it depends on the starting concentration. In a zero order, T1 half is equal A at time zero over 2k. So again, the half-life is going to depend on the starting concentration. So we're going to look at practice problem 14.6 on 604. Okay? The problem says a first order reaction has a half-life, so T subscript one half equal to 26.4 seconds. Okay? How long does it take the concentration to fall to one eighth its initial concentration? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Okay?
Okay. And I'm going to show you one. Now, one of the ways that we can do this is we can say that T1 half. Okay. It's a first order process. So let me copy that. Where did what I ah, undo? I'm just going to say that 26.4 seconds is equal to, okay, 0 0.6693 divided.